evening. Welcome to today's webinar on the topic, the role of LMS for higher education. Thanks for joining us today. Before we start the webinar, let me give you a quick introduction about 3E Software Solutions. Myself, Shashank here. I lead digital marketing at 3E. Along with me on the speaker panel, we have Mr. Virez from 3E. Virez is the practice head for e-learning solutions delivery. Before I pass it over to the speaker panel, uh, let me give you a quick introduction about 3E Software Solutions. We are a technology company providing e-learning solutions to training, education, and corporate industries. We are specialized in designing and developing full-fledged e-learning ecosystems, for example, LMS and e-commerce for training businesses, LMS and virtual classrooms for academia and training, and LMS and ERP for corporates. Well, that is a very brief one-liner kind of intro of what we are. Virez will lead today's webinar, and he will walk us through different roles in LMS and what are the advantages of using LMS for higher education. So as the session goes on, you can post your queries to me or Anmol over the private chat, and we will take up your queries at the end of the session. Now, without further delay, let's start the session. Virez, now it is all over to you. Yeah. Thanks, Sashan, uh, for passing over the handle. So, yeah, let us get started um, with the, the webinar as per the topic, uh, the role of the LMS uh, with respect to the higher education. So, uh, what we'll cover in this uh, webinar, uh, probably I'll give you the brief, and uh, following up with this, I'll be able to showcase it to you that how these uh, have been handled on the LMS system with different roles. So the first one, like user management, so I'll be able to, uh, in this webinar, we'll be covering up uh, the program management okay, uh, on the enrollment and how the course content uh, can be uploaded, how the course can be created. And uh, the same way, so there are different types of formats available while creating a course. So, and how you define it using uh, academic years. and. Uh, learning delivery where uh, there are different types of uh, learning deliveries like self-paced learning forum and uh, even we have instructional training as well so and even blended learning where you combine the online and then the offline learning and we call it as blended and also we uh, also cover assessments and certification how you create an assessment or a quiz how you grade it uh, whenever you when the learners upload the assignments and how the certification management works when do you award the certificate so these are all the things that we'll be covering up uh, in this webinar so coming back to the um, statement like what is IAD LMS okay so I just wanted to give a brief of like what is higher education LMS it's a platform uh, where it is meant uh, for enabling the training and education with e-learning so that's that's all uh, pretty much it, it says and also the higher education learning management system is a it is based on a modal um, platform i mean to say it is a popular one of the popular open source uh, lms platforms even uh, now we can consider that it is a popular lms system as well not only compare comparatively uh, when you compare it with uh, any paid LMS platforms as well, like uh, proprietary LMS platforms. So, and which are more dedicated for K-12 and higher education learnings. So that's uh, the overall, uh, the brief explanation of what is higher LMS, higher education LMS. So here, um, uh, as you can see in this uh, infographic, so like these are the things that we'll be covering up what is under administrator and management. So, web access, defining different user roles, activating and deactivating the students on the courses, on the enrolling them and unenrolling them on the respective courses, okay? And the classroom management and certification management. That That's all come under administrator or management. And when it comes to curriculum, uh, tracking the instructor led training, uh, creating the different learning plans and assigning, assigning it to uh, learners, okay? How you set up the courses, 
as an instructor as a, as a faculty how you track the courses uh, i mean to say how do you track the courses in two different ways how you track it as a an admin uh, so that you will be able to give some suggestions to teachers or the instructors so that they can improve the content on those uh, the i mean to say on the content of the courses and uh, so that's how the tracking of courses works and managing the content by the instructor how we can manage okay the same applies for uh, curriculum and calendar as well okay these are all the things that comes under the curriculum or course administration team and uh, teaching staff so there will be learning delivery they will be able to create assessments they will conduct quizzes okay they will issue the certificates based on some criteria that they set on those respective courses and they can access reports of learners uh, how they are doing it uh, i mean to say with respect to the the courses okay and uh, derive insights and uh, even they can uh, schedule some tasks for them okay and then ask them to complete it by uh, within this time okay uh, that is again comes under the faculties or teaching staff where they are assigned assigned to in the lms okay and coming to the students okay uh, they will be consuming the content uh, they will be attending the live classes which are scheduled by faculties or teaching staffs and they will be attending the quizzes and uploading the assignments and uh, they attend to the forums and then they do um, all other things like uh, they want to uh, participate in forums messaging and a q and a and also they have a gamification feature where they can see uh, their uh, where they stand in terms of uh, courses as well and in terms of uh, in each course they see that okay what is the grade that they are achieving and the overall learning they will be able to see a system level uh, grade for them or system level rank that where they stand in system level and where they stand in uh, the course level so yeah uh, now let us get started um, with the demo okay. i'll be able to share my screen now hope um, is uh, everyone are able to see my screen so here um, this is how the the site home page looks like uh, for an air education lms and uh, this is a customized version of um, the moodle lms platform so this is how it looks like as you can see uh, these are the courses which are available in this uh, lms system these are the teachers these are the different categories okay and uh, yes this is how the site home page looks and uh, once uh, you log in as a admin or it um, means as a system admin so this is how your dashboard looks like so and here um, i'll be able to explain it to you more uh, because uh, here uh, once i get started i'll be able to explain you i'll i'll explain you about three roles one is system admin how uh, he'll be using the system and uh, what all things he can do okay uh, from user management to role management to course management and then uh, the enrollment okay and other things once it is handed over to the teacher or the faculty then what is the teacher uh, or faculty that he can uh, he or she can do on the system that is another a uh, role that i'll be showcasing it to you today and at last the learner or the student uh, how we consume the content and uh, what all the other things what are the other features that have been provided for the learner so these are the three roles i'll be explaining you um, on today's webinar so and also they have different uh, personalized dashboards uh, when they log in as system admin when they log in as faculty so right now whatever the dashboard that you are seeing is the system admin dashboard this is how it looks like and uh, there are different types of uh, like i mean to say uh, insights available and you can create some user reports by using this okay and what are the upcoming events uh, right now okay. so and uh, as you can see what are the that have been already uh, is completed okay so and also who are the online users what are the latest latest batches so these are the different types of um, i mean to say uh, information available for the admin but uh, uh, there are some different kind of blocks as you can see these are these are nothing but blocks okay these are dedicated or these are meant for 
some of the roles okay once i uh, switch back to learner role and faculty role i'll be able to explain you uh, each bit of it so now directly what i'll do is i'll jump on to um the user management so first of all once uh, the system admin or logs in and he wants to onboard some learners or teachers okay so how we will be able to do it so if you go under uh, site administration as you can see and there are different types of sections like users courses okay and um, the other thing so now i'll just uh, check this users section and um, see there are different types of um, uh, like uh, if you want to add a new user you can click on add new user okay so once you click on add a new user what you will be able to get is you will be in a, a form where you need to fill out all these details uh, that uh, like whatever whoever the user that you want to onboard so you need to mention all these details here uh, and once you are done with all these uh, details uh, means once you fill out all these details so once you click on create user that respect user will be created but it's not a practice that uh, uh, if there are thousands of users you want to onboard and you cannot do it uh, one by one so there are there is for that reason you have a option uh, called upload users for example whenever um, when i when i came back here on the user section there is a option called upload users once i click on upload users you will be able to see um, a file okay this is the example file uh, they have given uh, to you and um, you can follow this uh, for example if i uh, click on this example that says you i'll be able to uh, see that okay this is how this uh, file should look like and these are the mandatory details that you need to provide to upload the any users okay so once you actually um, once you select a file for example now i'll just showcase it to you how it looks so So here, uh, what I'll do is I'll just upload this uh, CSV file here. So once I done that, uh, I'll just click on upload this file. Yeah. So once I done that, up, I just get the uh, option called upload users, and you will be able to see now. Uh, they will be able to provide um, means the system will be able to provide a preview for you so that uh, you want to preview this uh, before you create the user and once um, you feel that okay this, this the information is being all correct and then you want to upload then you need to click on upload users so what it does is right now i'm just showcasing it to you that uh, i'm just uploading it as uh, three users uh, but uh, you can um, actually load the csv or uh, update the csv in a way where you want to upload 100 users, 1000 users, or based on your um, the what you can whatever the number of users that you want to upload, then you can mention all these details and you can use this feature to um, upload the users. So once you've done that, so then um, those users will be automatically onboarded to this uh, respective system. So this is how um, I mean to say the user management. I mean to say uh, once you um, once you are the person who, are, who is responsible to onboard the users and this is how you do it so once the users have been now created uh, now what is the next step so obviously you need to create a course okay so as a system I mean so this is how the LMS works right like a, a learning management system which involves role management user management after that uh, there is a course okay you want to create a course and you want to assign the uh, like students to those respective courses. So what we call here is we enroll the users uh, to that respective course. So now I've just showcased it to you that how the users are created. Now I'll come to a point where uh, how the courses have been created. So already the users have been created and onboarded um, as you can see here. So I'm just, I just explained it to you. This is how you create. Uh, but if you look at the uh, user section, browse list of users, 
there are um, many users which have been already onboarded. So for that reason, I'll not be able to means uh, continue on uh, user creations and everything. So that I'll continue on the other parts of it. So now uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, go to courses here and I'll create a course. Okay. So uh, before to that, uh, there is a um, uh, if you click on manage courses and categories, you can see that there are different types of uh, categories which are present. Okay, uh, categories here, you can see that these are all nothing but grades or you can consider it as classes. Okay, grade 8, grade 9, okay, and then um, grade 10. So there are different types of categories available and inside each uh, grades, there are different types of courses available. Okay, So as you can see here, under grade 10, there are different courses. Under grade 9, there are different courses. So now um, assume, okay, so, uh, and also right now you can uh, see that, okay, these are the different grades. So I want to assign some uh, class teachers uh, to these grades, okay. For grade eight, there is a teacher where he belongs to um, the class teacher. He was actually, um, means I mean to say a class teacher or a faculty where he'll take care of all the uh, other things with respect to grade eight. So there is an option where you can assign the roles, okay. Right now, once I click on uh, the respective, uh, grade uh, i mean to say in moodle words it is uh, in lms words it is category but you can assume this is as a department or a class and uh, i can click on assign roles so here uh, there are different types of roles like uh, which are available here but uh, you can create custom roles for now these are the roles which have been present on the lms but you will be able to create custom roles and give it like a um, a class teacher and you and there are uh, different privileges on um this lms system there are around um um like around 400 privileges which are present on moodle and you want to assign some privileges to that uh, respective role then you you have that authority you have the privilege as a system admin to create custom roles and assign that privileges to him so that they become the uh, the head of this uh, classes okay so that they'll be able to manage this completely i mean to say from uh, creation of course to uh, edit, uh, edit editing the course and deleting the course adding the faculties okay uh, for those respective courses so so he'll be the head of the um, department that's what we can say okay for now what i'll do is assume that i am the one uh, who is the admin i logged in as an admin but i will show you like how the courses are getting created you assume that uh, there will be an intermediate role which will be uh, between the system admin and a faculty like in head of the department where they'll create a course and then they'll assign the students or teachers to that respective course so um, as you can see i selected grade 10 now what i'll do is i'll just click on uh, create new course and uh, once i click on create new course uh, this is uh, what i'm getting okay so i need to fill out these details okay i'm just giving as demo course and then which category i want to make this course available so i'm just making it grade 10 and you can mention the start date and end date as well so right now by default it will be like a one year uh, that's that is how it takes up but you can change it at any point of time so this is the other details that you need to mention id number is optional okay and if you want to upload some uh, course summary you can upload uh, the uh, summary and uh, course image you can upload a, um, a course image as well which is referring to that respective course and uh, for now what i'll do is um, I'll keep it as and the course format uh, like there are different types of formats uh, where you want to uh, represent your course okay so for example if you view topics so it will be like topic one topic two and uh, whatever the sections that you want to create you can mention and those top those topics will be automatically created and you can uh, i'll be able i'll i'll showcase it to you that how it works so for now what i'll do is i'll just select weekly format weekly format here uh, in the sense how it works is um, as you can see i start date i mentioned it uh, 7th january so what it will do is um, from the from the start date of the whatever it is being um, the started so th that will consider the uh, I mean to say whatever the input that you are given for started from that date onwards, it will consider four weeks. Okay, 
and then for example 7th to uh, 14th jan 14 to 21 jan 21 to 28 so that that's how the weekly sections automatically gets created on a course and uh, you can uh, create activities on those respective weekly sections as well so and i i'll showcase it to you that how it looks so once i am i will actually fill out these details what i'll do is i'll just click on uh, save and display So um, probably um, right now what I'm seeing here is so uh, already um, the course already got created. Now uh, now it's time to enroll the users. Okay. Now uh, uh, for example, uh, that is a demo course that I created. I want to enroll some students. Uh, students in the sense who are already present on the system. As I told you uh, in the previous step, so that I have onboarded some users. Okay. But uh, in those respective uh, onboarded users, I want to make some um, users as student and some users as faculties or as teacher. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just click on enroll users, and uh, there is an option uh, where you want to select the user. Right now, I'll select um, like Barry. Okay. And, uh, just selecting randomly. Okay. And uh, once I click on the uh, I am assigning the role called student to them. Once I click on enroll users, so what happens is, as you can see, uh, these two users have been um, enrolled to this respective course. So what I'll do is right now, I just switch back to the learner dashboard and I'll show you that how it works. So now I'm just back um, here, as you can see, uh, as a uh, Brenda, I logged in. Uh, for now, I am just seeing this. Okay, grade ten mathematics is the only course uh, which is being enrolled for this respective user. Uh, but uh, what I'll do is I'll just refresh it because uh, I think some uh, previously I enrolled the user with the demo course. As you can see right now, uh, this is being now enabled for this respective student, and um, I think now uh, he'll be able to. Uh, he or she will be able to consume this course from now okay so as as i was mentioning to you this is how the weekly uh, i while creating the course i selected uh, four sections and i uh, selected the weekly format so this is how my uh, the course view looks like okay even it um, even actually it, it applies the same for the uh, um, the admin as well i mean to say system admin so now what i'll do is i need to add the content okay so uh, there is now what what I've done is I have created users, I've enrolled the users, but I need to um, add the content. Okay. So here, um, so right now this is um, where you want to like uh, create a I means assign a faculty to this respective course, assign a teacher. Okay. So the same way what I've done. So while enrolling the students, okay, I can enroll the teacher as well. So right now what I'll do is. I'll just go under um, the same enroll users. I select some user, and then uh, I'll enroll them as a teacher. Once I click on enroll users, so obviously the same the same user, what whichever I selected called Suchita Sharma, has been uh, enrolled to this respective course as a teacher, as you can see now. So once I go under um, means so now what I'll do is I'll just switch back to uh, a teacher role I means as I already logged in as Suchita Sharma in one of um, my uh, like demo system. So I'll just switch back here. So as you can see now, um, just a minute. Yeah, as you can see here, so I logged in as uh, the profile called Suchita Sharma and uh, I have been enrolled to the, means uh, the Suchita Sharma has been enrolled to the course called demo course and uh, it is now uh, available for her and then uh, they, there is an option, okay, as, as I compare, um, like 
the faculty will be having more options i mean to say they can add the activities and uh, they will be able to upload uh, some content inside this respective uh, course okay so but uh, when i compare it with um, normally with a um, learner now as you can see is the student role you can't see that option okay so that you do need to edit this okay but uh, there is an option here for uh, faculty what i can do is i just click on turn editing on and uh, now i have the privilege uh, i mean to say because i uh, the sushita sharma has been uh, enrolled to this course as a teacher so obviously they have different privileges here so <clears throat> sorry so here what i'll do is um, as a uh, teacher what i can add different activities onto the section so for example uh, for this respective week i want to add a, uh, a live session where i i'll ask all the students to log into the session okay here in this uh, respective context i'll be able to explain it to you that how we have integrated it with uh, virtual classroom so here we used a big blue button um, as a virtual classroom integration and it is being closely integrated within lms platform so uh, there are different virtual classroom options which are available like ms teams and the zoom and the other things but uh, big blue button is the one uh, which is being uh, like integrated closely with lms and uh, it is a lta standard okay learner tools uh, interoperability where it uh, shares the information uh, between the uh, lms tool and the virtual classroom tool but that is need, that is not being offered by many many tools uh, which are available um, like which are like uh, paid or i mean to say but this is the open source uh, um, virtual classroom tool which is available and we recommend uh, to use this as well so now what i'll do is i'll just click on add an activity so you can see that different types of uh, activities which are being present for a teacher to add it to the respective week okay so for this week as i told you there are different types first i'll explain you okay there is an assess assignment you can add an assignment there is a forum section there is a, an interactive content uh, there are different types okay so there is a book okay you can add there is a page uh i mean to say there is a quiz okay you can add. for now what i'll do is i'll just click on big blue button um, and once i click on add so what happens here is um i have been um to a form where i need to enter all these um room details so now what i'll do is i'll just uh, give it as um demo meeting and uh, i can notify the users who are all enrolled to this respective course because i told you already uh, that uh, there are two students which have been who have been enrolled here okay. and also there are different types of settings which are available like activity or room settings where you need to um, mention the welcome message and uh, uh, i if you want more information on big blue button uh, you can actually refer to some of the videos uh, i uh, will be able to share it uh, through uh, public chat so i mean to say you can get it that uh, get the playlist of all those videos on big blue button so we have done uh, some webinars as well on those things so uh, here uh, i just wanted to show you in a context that how the teacher will create an online session and the, what are the different options will be available okay right now as you can see um, all users are overall users in, enrolled they will be joining the session as viewer and the one user called uh, sushita sharma will be the moderator uh, once i have done i you may, you can schedule the session as well for example you want to make it available for some time i mean to say uh, you want to schedule it on 8 january okay you can do it as well for example i can open this and then i will be able to um, give that uh, input uh, the time so that it will you can you can even um, schedule the session as well and also there are different types of um these things okay um like as uh, to activity completion you can restrict the access okay and uh, yeah these are the things once i done with this uh, configuration so what i'll do is i'll just click on save and display so right now right now you are able to see that okay um, there is an option called where you can join the session but uh, i'll just show you that how the learner uh, will uh, 
for example if they want to log into this session because uh, the learner if i refresh this okay i just switch back to the learner as well so i am i'm able to see that okay in this week um there is a, a meeting a demo meeting so demo session which is available so once i click on this uh, definitely i'll not be able to um the conference room is ready you can join the session now because i have linked it to one of the session so oh, they can join the session using this okay um, and also they will be able to um, see uh, the users okay for example i was mentioning it to you this is an lta um, integration okay so what it does is it shares out the session here okay so the person in this conference and i logged in here and there is an one user as well uh, as a learner i have logged in so this is how uh, it looks like for example the one instructor i have logged in and then uh, uh, there is an student who logged in so this is how the uh, the live classroom integration works um, within lms and uh, they can schedule the sessions and they can ask the students to uh, join the sessions okay so once i have done with this i'll just uh, click on in meeting so here obviously it will be automatically ended since the moderator or moderator or i mean to say over is there so they already ended this so this is how um, you can actually schedule a session so um, so once you are uh, i mean to say once you schedule the session so you can uh, different types of activities as i was mentioning it to you so here um, you see this okay option where uh, for this week i have mentioned uh, this as a one of the activity but i can add different types of activities like uh, assessment or an assignment on different weeks and also i can upload different uh, uh, content types like um, a pdf or uh, there are different types of uh, content formats which have been supported on lms and you can upload that on different weeks and also uh, you can set up the prerequisites for those uh, respective activity as well for example uh, in the last week of uh, jan so i have set up a assessment uh, a quiz so that should be only available until unless the learner has completed all the other activities which have been present in the previous weeks so this is where we call uh, this is where we set up the restrictions or prerequisites uh, for that respective section or for that respective activity as well so that uh, until unless they complete the previous activities they will not be eligible to attend the, the final exam or final assessment that is being given so this is how um, it works uh, i mean to say um, like how here what i showcased um, more was like uh, um, once the users are created and how the users have been actually enrolled to a course once the courses have been enrolled to a i uh, sorry the, once the users have been enrolled to a course so there are different users one is learner and a faculty so now i showcased it to you that our faculty will be able to manage the course uh, from their whatever the privileges that are being applicable i mean to say which are available on the system so uh, up to here um, i have showcased it to you that uh, this is how the faculty will be able to um, um, add the content or present uh, the i mean to say get the course okay so uh, moving on to the the other set of things i mean to say uh, i'll actually go uh, with the um, the other course which have been already set up and i'll showcase it to you that how the activities or reports uh, will be actually taken up by the faculty and I, uh, what all the reports that um, the faculty can see against the learners okay which is being recorded against the students <clears throat> so what i'll do is i'll just go to the dashboard and i have um, as a teacher and i'll just go to this um, grade 10 mathematics so uh, definitely this is actually a course um, which is already created with a cleaner interface and uh, we have uh, defined the proper um, format as well like what is the chapter one and uh, and we have actually segregated into different sections as well i mean to say section one what all things have been there section two and up to section six we have actually defined it and uh, there are different types of um, i mean to say options which are available uh, inside a course okay 
so for a, a faculty right now i'm just showcasing it to you as a faculty okay but a learner i'll be able to showcase it to you um, in a bit while that how the learner will be able to access this course so coming back to um, uh, the uh, coming back to the quiz and assignment i'll be able to showcase uh, it to you that how the quiz uh, can be uh, actually um, added to a section so here what i'll do is i'll just go under section 5 i'll so here i am able to see that there are different types of uh, uh, activities which are available uh, for example i have uploaded a pdf uh, this is how it looks like okay so this is uh, how it looks like for a learner and uh, there are different other different types like you have a link here okay so once i click on this link i will be able to uh, this is how the video uh, can be uploaded onto your content so now we have embedded this so i can play it uh, from here uh, in this way okay so and, uh, and there are different uh, other uh, activities that we added like forums okay so how the forums works uh, i'll be able to showcase it to you that uh, the forums here i am i'm just uh, went under a forum called out forms where uh, there are different discussions which are being created here so uh, one of the Uh, discussion that is being um, happening what are real numbers okay um, and there are different types of users who have been um, so answering this okay so and i can actually right now what i am doing is so i can actually uh, reply to this okay i can reply to the um, the older threads as well and if i want to create a new discussion we can actually uh, create a new discussion topic once i click on add a new discussion topic we can enter it subject and once you enter a message and you can um, post to forum so here how it works is it actually basically uh, useful for the learners where they can collaborate in a manner where they have some kind of uh, uh, doubts okay it is more of uh, like a um, forum where you want to get clarify some things here okay that's how you use these forums and once you actually create the discussion topics and you allow the users to reply to them and you can vote them okay what is the answer that is being given by the different learners or uh, even even the teachers will be actively participating on the forum uh, by answering different uh, students questions there and uh, even the other students will be able to reply it and they can upload some files uh, reference files if they find some relevant answers on those are relevant links as well so that's how this the forums uh, which will be useful um, in an lms and in higher education lms system okay so um, moving on to the next thing okay so how the quiz okay so right now you can see this is a quiz okay once i uh, click on quiz here so as a faculty um, here you can see this okay um, that uh, uh, this quiz actually enabled with a um, the validation okay so i mean to say um, before that what whoever the learner wants to take up this uh, assessment uh, they should uh, means allow their uh, camera to uh, allow the access to the camera once they uh, do this so uh, that will be enabled and once you click on uh, start attempt okay for now what i am just uh, showcasing it to you is uh, mostly on the um as a faculty but as a learner you will be able to uh, see that option called start attempt and then once you start uh, it will take out the pictures uh, at random uh, period of time and then this will be useful for the uh, the faculty to check that okay is the authenticated user and is the one who, who is the taking up the quiz uh, means uh, uh, by their own manual checks okay that is one type of a uh, i mean to say uh, a functionality which is available okay so but um, as a faculty already there are some people who took the uh, quizzes okay so and there are some reports which are available so once i click on view proctoring report i'll be able to see this okay there are different types of people who took this um, quiz and uh, once i click on view proctoring report you can see this okay there are different um, um, pictures which have been taken and you can check this okay this will be taken up during the quiz okay so that uh, you can check that okay if there are any malpractice which are happened but it is not a 
a complete proctoring solution, but it is a bit of a partial proctoring solution which is available here. Okay, so uh, and this is very helpful um, in identifying the uh, the user has taken the exam with uh, uh, without any malpractice. Okay, so that's how uh, uh, this the proctoring repair works. And also you can see that there is a time limit which is fit as 30 minutes. Once you start attending the quiz, you will be um, having 30 minutes to complete this quiz. And that is how you actually, um, I mean to say, um, to create a quiz. Okay, so now I will be able to showcase it to you uh, that uh, how the quiz can be created. Okay, so here, um, as I was um, mentioning it to you, so how to add the questions. Okay. So now, uh, if I go under edit settings, so you see that okay, the uh, the quiz okay, this is the name, and uh, here I as I told you, I can open the quiz at any point of time. Okay, this is the scheduling the quiz as well. So you want to open it only for um, uh, uh, for example, you want to open it on January eighth uh, for some time, and you want to close the quiz. Okay, and you want to do some kind of a buffer. So, so that you can do that kind of uh, open the quiz and close the quiz time, and you want to give some time limit for that. Okay, you can set up the time limit as well, like uh, one hour or thirty minutes based on your thing, uh, based on your whatever um, the time limits that you have and grade. Okay, what is the grade that you want to ask the user to pass when they uh, get that grade? Okay, and uh, there are different types. Okay, there is a safe exam browser. Okay, safe exam browser is another example. I will be able to. I'll showcase it to you those things. Okay, the extra restriction on attempts. You want to restrict the extra attempt based on passwords. Okay, the feedback, activity completion based on grade. Uh, if they get the required passing grade, then only you can say that okay, uh, this activity is uh, completed. Otherwise, uh, uh, you you the activity will not be uh, completed. Uh, this is how the the quiz. I mean to say uh, configuration. Also, once you want to. Add the quiz. Uh, this is how you add it. So once you add the quiz, so how how you um, means uh, normally uh, the questions will be added once you add the quiz. Once you go under this quiz, okay, you will be able to preview quiz now with there. Okay. So since it is um, I, as I was mentioning it to you, I agree with the validation process. And so what what it does is um, right now I haven't enabled my camera access uh, for that reason it is. Uh, So in uh, I mean to say in the learner perspective I'll showcase how it works. But definitely uh, what you can do is you can add the quiz and you can add the quiz questions from the question bank. I hope in model LMS you might have been uh, you if you are known with uh, like uh, you can uh, open up a quiz and then you can create a uh, question bank okay and then you can upload the questions from that respective question bank as well okay. That's how you create a quiz. In Moodle, or if you want to add it manually, you can add that questions manually as well. One thing. So, so here, um, coming back to the assignment, okay. Uh, here also, there are different types of. Uh, there are two types of assignments that you can ask user to submit. One is, uh, and uh, uh, means I mean to say, I'll be able to showcase it to you here. Uh, real numbers assess assignment. You are given some kind of a, a name. And you are given some questions, okay? And these are the questions that they need to answer and upload it, or that is up to them. So you you have the options in different forms, okay? So now you want to sub sub because the learners will be able to submit the um, assignments. You can allow different types of submissions, okay? You can allow them online text where they can uh, use the editor and then they submit the text, and you can allow the file submissions as well, so that they'll create a um, they'll take up these questions and then they'll answer it in a uh, digital format. And once they convert that into PDF, and then they can upload it here. Okay. So uh, and also this will be a manual creating process. Once the assignment gets uploaded or uh, updated by the learner, then um, the faculty or the teacher will be able to review that assignment and uh, grade it um, against uh, the whatever the means whatever the assignment that was being uploaded. Based on that, and you'll be able to give some reviews as well, like comments, okay, so that you need to improve here, okay. Uh, and that is inline comments, okay, so that they can add and they'll, and the learner will be able to uh, 
get some kind of a notification saying that there is a comment made against an assignment and there is an another feature um, that is available is um, the annotating okay so uh, i'll be able to showcase it to you how it works i'll showcase that with a learner and a um, faculty workflow so how this annotation of uh, the pdf uh, when they want to give the feedback by annotating so that is uh, another um, feature so um, feedback types, but this is what I was mentioning. One is comments, annotate video on offline grading worksheet. There are different types of feedbacks that you can give and you can enable that. And uh, submission settings, uh, you can, uh, so what is the attempt that you want to restrict? And there are different, okay, um, like when you want to allow submission from which date to which date. And, uh, so yes, now um, once I've done with this, I'll just click on save and display and uh, that's how my assignment, uh, that's how the faculty can create an assignment and uh, from there, uh, the learners will be able to upload that um, assignment. Okay. So yeah, so what I'll do is uh, right now, so this is how the uh, assignment's getting created. So um, with respect to uh, the, um, the reports, okay, so, I'll come to the annotation of PDF at the last uh, before uh, I move on to the, um, the assignment feedbacks and uh, before I move on to the learner role. Uh, I wanted to showcase the reports. Okay, what all the reports that faculty will be able to see against a course uh, with respect to the learners as well. So, what I'll do is I'll just uh, go back to the, the main course page. So, here um, you are able to see that option called catalog. I click on reports here. So, so as you can see here, uh, there are different types of reports which are available. So the first one is more of an activity completion. So once I click on this activity completion, uh, I'll just click on check. Okay. You are able to see that okay, there are different users uh, who are being enrolled to this. And uh, these are the different activities which are present. And uh, as you can see, um, whatever the blue tick marks are there, these are all being completed already. Okay. So and these are the users on the y-axis. Uh, who are being enrolled okay? and these are the um, activities which are present on the x-axis and uh, which are being like activities we call it and and you see the status of them okay? who are all completed this is how the and you can download it in a spreadsheet or an, uh, in a csv format as well um, that's how the activity completion uh, looks like okay? and the same way activity report activity report is more for a um admin where um, they want to i mean to say i mean not for an admin actually it's for a faculty where they want to improve the content okay for example if i if you consider chapter one okay uh there are only um 25 views by nine users okay and there are 55 views by 18 users okay based on the consideration of the views and uh, how many users they access so you can see that okay there is uh, there are some resources which are not being viewed by many users and you see that okay there is an improvement that might be needed from the faculty side itself that they want to improve the content so that's the overall uh, insight that they get it from this activity report okay basically this is um, uh, this will be showcasing that what are the views uh, by different users on to that respective activities okay so this is one type of a report uh, activity report and there is an another report uh, called uh, course participation okay here if i uh, click, click on course participation i want to uh, check some um, i mean to say a uh, real number anything okay so what i'll do is i'll just uh, Real numbers assignment, and I want to look out for last three months. Okay, 
and a uh, student okay all actions you are post okay so once i click on go so what it will give me is like it will give me the there are uh, this is an assignment okay which is being um, uh, being there on the course and i want to look back for 3 months what happened to that assignment what are the different types of views or posts that have been made okay as you can see now okay there are 18 uh, learners which have been enrolled here and some of the people they posted it post in the sense they uploaded the assignments but some of the people they haven't done for example if you see cameron locker they know it is saying but you can say that okay uh, you want to send them a message saying that okay you want to uh, submit this assignments as soon as possible what i'll do is i'll just click on no whoever is no uh, whatever the results that are coming up as no i'll select those users and with selected users i want to send a message okay so once i do that what i'll do is i'll just uh, um, type some message okay okay you need to uh, complete this asap so once i um, send message to three people what happens uh, here is uh, the this this will send uh, the messages uh, to these three people uh, who were i actually um, i mean to say enable okay they will be able to receive an email uh, i mean to say message notification on their lms system uh, saying that okay um, you need to uh, this whatever the message has been sent right if you see here on the messaging section um you see this okay right now i sent three messages okay you are able to see this okay camera unlocked hey you need hey you need to complete this as well so and uh, this is how it looks for um, them as well once they log in uh, to the system they will be able to see under their messages section saying that uh, uh, by uh, means they will be able to see these messages okay that is how this um activity uh, participation i mean to say course participation uh, looks like okay the logs uh, here uh, you can select uh, whatever the groups that you want to have okay and uh, what is the participant okay all days and just click on get these logs you will be able to receive the logs okay so what user um, you will be able to see that okay what has been done by the respective student for example you want to see only a one user okay barry what he has what she has done on the respective course you will be able to see that okay there is an assignment component which is being uh, status have been viewed okay so this is how it looks like uh, on the reporting side okay so there are uh, these are the different types of reports uh, which are available uh, for the uh, faculty to check against uh, the course okay so even the course completion the same thing okay right now uh, there is uh, there are no course completion reports but it will show up all the progress of the respective student and uh, uh, they will be able to download it from there okay so yeah um, these are the uh, different types of uh, reports which are available so now what i will do is um, as a last part i just wanted to quickly uh, show you this uh, um, how the learner uh, will be able to attend a quiz and uh, how he will be able to upload an assignment okay so how it will uh, get reviewed from the um, faculty okay so what i'll do is uh, now i'll just switch back to um, a student role um, and i logged in already as you can see and uh, so grade 10 mathematics here if you see the same um, the whatever the quiz whatever the course that i was showcasing so uh, here i was mentioning it to you that okay this is how the pre the prerequisites or i mean to say right now i have i went enable the prerequisites and other parts of it but uh, um, uh, there is a option called message my teacher as you can see here and once i click on uh, this sharma i can send a message okay suchita sharma is a teacher now um i you can mention okay hey um so once you send this okay what happens is obviously the same way okay the message 
been sent to the privately to the teacher and uh, they'll be in get, get in touch with you from this so if you if i switch back again uh, if i go under messages section you can see that okay there is a, a message from uh, brenda and you are able to see that okay that's how the uh, the message my teacher uh, looks like okay and if i want to attend some kind of a quiz okay so here uh, what i'll do is i'll just show you uh, the uh, the quiz part here okay so real numbers and uh, i want to attend this quiz so reattempt quiz now it will ask me to enable my camera so once i done that i agree with this okay and then i'll just click on start attempt so once i click on start attempt what it does is it will be showcasing my uh, video here and it will be capturing the random screenshots and i am just um like answering that as well okay and also you can see that there is a uh, timer that has been already started so once i have done with um, all the questions okay what i'll do is i'll just click on finish attempt once i have done with that uh, attempt once uh, i'll just click on submit all and finish so as you can see now um, this is the preview that i am just uh, able to receive okay uh, that uh, these are the questions that have been attended and uh, uh, this is the report that i got once i done with this finish review so yeah as you can see that uh, grades um, are also available here okay this is a great uh, thing that i just wanted to when i wanted to mention it to you on um, the faculty as well because i just i think i forgot to showcase it to you uh, if you can check this grade section here you will be able to see all the uh, grades which have been achieved, achieved by the learners as you can see here there is a total grade which is available and uh, this is how the grade report looks like for a uh, teacher okay so and uh, the, uh, that is one thing that i just missed out for that reason i just uh, switched to a faculty and i should use so so this is how uh, the the quiz uh, will be taken up by the learner and uh, this is how it will be created okay, so uh, now uh, the last part i just wanted to quickly have a um, walk through of this um, so annotating the assignment okay whatever the assignment have been uploaded by the the learner how the teacher or the faculty will be annotating that okay giving the feedback in annotation okay so what i will do is i'll um, again switch back as a teacher and uh, if i go back to the same course so here uh, if you see this um, the last section i'm uh, sorry the fifth the section 5 we have two assignments okay one is uh, this one and then, so when i go under arithmetic progressions here i have some submissions okay which is being made against okay? and uh, there is one submission against barry which is not being graded and there are other students who haven't even uploaded the uh, assignments as well but um, uh, if you go under um, uh, like a, as a so here uh, So I'm just logging in now as a uh, Barry. So the same course, actually, um, I mean to say the great and mathematics already it is being uploaded. Okay, the assignment have been already uploaded by the um, this student called. Uh, Sorry, I, I think logged in. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so under this uh, section is the assignment and uh, it is submitted for grading okay so uh, but uh, i can see that what is the submission made 
so i have submitted a file okay um i mean to say it will be under this file submissions okay for now uh, it is not being part i'll just showcase it to you that how it can be graded so now what i'll do is um i'll just click on uh, grade and this is the submission that has been made and uh, now um, if you think that as a learner uh, as a faculty i want to annotate it okay i want to um, annotate it in this way so i'll just what i'll do is i'll just make this as corrected and i want to give an um, probably an inline comment okay so for this i want to give an inline comment so yes now what i have done is uh, i have given the inline comment now once i done with this i just click on save changes so and also you want to a uh, grading okay i will just grade out of 100 i'll just grade it as 70 and then um, i'll just click on save changes so once this grading has been done right okay as you can see it is being graded and also whenever i log in as a respective user um here i can see that um, i just show it to you. in the same section so it is being graded and uh, there is a feedback which has given actually you can see this out of 100 i got 70 and uh, i am able to see that there is a uh, annotated annotated feedback which was given by suchita sharma who is the faculty uh, that is being uploaded reuploaded okay to the um, learner okay i can view that okay i can see that annotated pdf in this way as you can see this is being annotated and i am able to see the comments as well which is being made by the uh, respective uh, user okay. Uh, i mean to say respective faculty even i can download it by clicking on this so it will be downloaded to my local system you can you can refer to it okay uh, what is the review that is being given by uh, the faculty i can correct that and again i can reupload the assignment based based on the uh, the remarks or reviews that is being given by the faculty okay so i think um, this covers up um, all the roles uh, starting from uh, the admin Uh, from a system admin to a faculty and from a uh, to a learner, and uh, there are different types of uh, features that I showcased it to you that how the user management, content management, grade, reporting, uh, assignment, uh, how the learner can take up the quiz in a timely manner with the time bound, and uh, how assignment will be uploaded and how it will be created manually with annotations. Okay, so yeah, these are the things uh, which will come under the higher education. uh i hope um i covered most of the things okay so what i'll do is i'll take up some questions if the time permits so here this topic is the same so finish um, i think we are running short on time so you can probably take one of two questions and uh, uh probably the participants uh, who has posted the queries they can drop their email ids to shashank and uh, we'll try to respond to your queries uh, as soon as possible yeah sure sure yeah. so yeah i'll take up some uh, one or two questions uh, okay so um can academic years or semesters uh, dependencies be handled for example a student may not be enrolled to a second year of program unless he completes the mandates from first year similar for semesters yes uh, um, as i was mentioning it to you um, uh, this is again a prerequisite uh, option which is available Uh, based on uh, the 
different types of i mean to say uh, programs okay i mean to say i i until unless you complete a program you will not be eligible to attend the any the next program okay i was just showcasing it to you in the demo about the activities uh, on the sections okay under the same course but you can even um, uh, manage it under different courses as well okay so the curriculum keeps changing for us over years for example the subjects the, the subjects in a semester change and sometimes subjects move from one semester to another can the system keep track of this this means need to track which subjects were there in semester 1 of msc mathematics for the academic year 2020 and academic year 2021 um etc so if i understand this correctly so uh, you are uh, you are, you been you have been asking that okay so uh, for example if you are running an ug or a pg program where you want to keep your courses uh, constant across uh, uh, different uh, like academic years and uh, is the system will keep track of it um, definitely there are different options that you may choose like you want to uh, categorize uh, the same courses i mean to say categorize it in a way where you want to uh, upload I means uh, reassign those courses on different categories for example i create a top level category called um, the academic year 2021 and then semester 1 as an another category and i'll upload the courses there and uh, uh, if i say two types here okay if you want to don't categorize in that way then you can change the start date and end date uh, uh, every semester or every academic year so that the course remains same but uh, you can take up the report or the the transactional data which has been happened for the last academic year in a dump or a, a, a data dump something like that so that you don't need to create different courses for uh, on different academic years so that you, you for every end of the academic year what you do is you create a dump and again change the course start date to end date from the uh, from the next academic year so that even you don't lose out the data um, whatever being already recorded and uh, you don't need to do the same exercise again creating the course okay but some as some people prefer that uh, to uh, replicate the same course uh, replicate the same course to an another category and uh, some people they do uh, in this way as well that uh, they want to uh, dump the data and then they want to uh, store it for the purpose and they'll just change the start date and end date of the course uh, whenever any new academic year starts okay. so yeah so i think uh, uh, with respect to that i think there is an another it is not just about course dependencies but dependencies of yeah yeah um, yeah that you can um, means at the semester level also uh, it can be actually uh, thought of uh, but uh, there are different options available here if you want to uh, go ahead in this way but definitely system will keep track of it uh, in terms of this but uh, the process that how you want to do it uh, it um, basically we can give you more options on that side as well, as we have already dealt with this kind of um in things with different universities yeah i think uh, the other questions what i'll do is i'll take it up uh, uh, offline and then uh, uh, what i'll do is if you can mention out your email ids uh, so i'll be able to uh, we'll be able to uh, give out the, the the answers which have been for that respective questions and also we'll be posting up the faq as well with answers and uh, and if you have any other questions you can send your queries at uh, the mentioned email id hello@directorysoftech.com if you have any queries for that i hope uh, yeah i think um, that's all uh, from my side uh okay thank you harish for the great presentation so we will share the answers of the queries over the email to everyone so this concludes the webinar thank you all for attending we hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation we will close the session now